But we are delighted. He needs no introduction. He is a friend of Trinity. He is a brother beloved. He's a preacher par excellence. He is a prophetic, powerful pulpiteer. He is our friend. He is our brother. He is none other than Father Michael Flager. We welcome him once again. Honest enough to address the one who says, mm. Well, don't hold me responsible for what my ancestors did. But you have enjoyed the benefits of what your ancestors did. And unless you are ready to give up the benefits, throw away your 401 fund, throw away your trust fund, throw away all the money that's been put away in the company you walked into because your daddy and your granddaddy and your great daddy, unless you're willing to give up the benefits, then you must be responsible for what was done in your generation because you are the beneficiary of this insurance policy. You must be honest enough. To expose white entitlement and supremacy wherever it raises its head. I said before, and I, I really don't want to make this political because you know I'm very unpolitical. When Hillary was crying and people said that was put on, I really don't believe it was put on. I really believe that she just always thought, this is mine. I'm Bill's wife. I'm white. And this is mine. I just got to get up and step into the plate. And then out of nowhere came, hey, I'm Barack Obama. And she said, oh, damn, where did you come from? I'm white. I'm entitled. There's a black man stealing my show! She wasn't the only one crying. There was a whole lot of white people crying. That hate hadn't gone away. It formed a counter-narrative, buried deep within each person, and at the center of which stood white people, some cruel, some ignorant, sometimes a single face, sometimes just a faceless image of a system claiming power over our lives. I can no more disown him than I can disown my white grandmother, a woman who helped raise me, a woman who sacrificed again and again for me, a woman who loves me as much as she loves anything in this world, but a woman who once confessed her fear of black men who passed her by on the street. I took her into the other room and asked her what had happened. A man asked me for money yesterday, while I was waiting for the bus. That's all? Her lips pursed with irritation. He was very aggressive, Barry. Very aggressive. I gave him a dollar and he kept asking. If the bus hadn't come, I think he might have hit me over the head. The point I was making was not that my grandmother uh, harbors uh, any racial animosity. She doesn't. Right. But she is a uh, typical white person. It's like Ooh. saying to a woman who has been repeatedly raped over and over and over and over and over and over, you need to get over the hell I do. Get the sucker who's been raping me and make him pay. Well, America has been raping people of color and America has to pay the price for the rape. How dare you say, get over it! I would not allow them to tear down Medgar. I would not allow them to tear down Malcolm. And I'll be damned if I'm going to sit back while you tear down Farrakhan and Jeremiah Wright. How dare you! How dare you! How dare you! Seek to reduce Jeremiah Wright! Who's one of the greatest biblical scholars this knows nation. what it means to be a black man living in a country and a culture that is controlled by rich white people. Hillary can never know that. Hillary ain't never been called a n
Uh, Hillary is married to Bill, and Bill have been good to us. No, he ain't. Bill did us just like he did Monica Lewinsky. He was right. Them bigger prisons passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing "God Bless America." No, 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 not "God Bless America." God damn America, that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating us citizens as less than human. God damn America, as long as she tries to act like she is God and she is supreme. These are friends and supporters of Barack Obama. You can vote with them, or you can vote what's best for your country.